here we go. It's time for the giveaway of the century. Guess what we're going to give away today? Not one program. No. Not two programs. Nope. Three workout programs. Here's what you get with today's giveaway. MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, MAPS Aesthetic. This is known as the RGB uh, bundle. So red, green, black bundle. Those are the colors of the programs. Here's how you can win all three of those incredible programs. By the way, follow them in that order. MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, MAPS Aesthetic. It's the holy trinity of sexy bodies. All right, leave a comment in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode to help us with the YouTube algorithm. Make it a good comment, subscribe to this channel, and click on the little bell thing to turn on your notifications. You got to do all three of those things. If we like your comment, if we think it's the best comment, we will notify you and you'll get all three of those incredible programs for free. Also, we are running a sale right now on two of our workout products. Here's the first one. Maps Anywhere, the equipment-free workout program. All you need are resistance bands to follow this workout program. It's 50% off. Then we have a bundle that's on sale. It's called the Fit Mom Bundle, but it's actually for anybody that wants to sign up for it. This bundle includes Maps Anywhere, Maps Hit, Maps Anabolic, and the Intuitive Nutrition Guide. And by the way, bundles are already always discounted. So it's already discounted about 25% off or something like that. Take an additional 50% off, okay? I know it sounds like we lost our minds. Maybe we did, but take advantage anyway. So you can get either one of those for 50% off. If you're interested, this is what you got to do. Go over to mapsfitnessproducts.com, click on one of those products, and then use the code NOVEMBER50 for that discount. All right? Here comes the show. We were talking about basketball. Um, He's all, hey, what do you think about your partners in well, our fucking business no well he was actually <laughs> so it was, it was actually a really interesting in business, boom, boom. it was actually a really interesting debate that we were having because he was he was trying to say that uh i mean he was trying to give me a compliment uh but it, it backfired on him because it also was in perfect alignment with our argument that we were just having in basketball and i'm such a team guy like i just in 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 life and business and in and in definitely in sports and so the players that i'm most attracted to are not the most commercial players like my favorite player is right, like it's the team it's the yeah, guys that make it yeah, work yeah draymond or iggy who comes off the bench I like i don't know about these guys but yeah well, i get it well but my point was that you know somebody on the outside looking in you know may think you know, like, oh, Sal is this entire business or Adam's this entire business and stuff. And I say, I don't I don't look at it that way. And in fact, many times it's the guy who you have no idea about that is the true glue or that really makes yeah. it work. And so we were talking about that. And he was like, are you going to try and say that, you know, Steph Curry is not ev – the Warriors are nothing without Steph Curry? And I said, well, I think Steph Curry is one of the greatest players to ever play the game. But I actually don't think he is the most valuable player. And he just freaked out. I was just like, you so want to know who I think? Debate. And I say, Draymond. And he's yeah. like – what? And I'm just like, yeah, because that guy, that guy is humble enough to give the ball up to Steph yeah. all the time. And that doesn't work all the time. There's, and so you got to keep that in, 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 in perspective, even when talking about a business where you have like four founders like this is like, you may hear someone who's louder like me all the time, but imagine the, the level of confidence it takes for Justin or Doug to allow me to be that personality or to do that. You like, know, you don't, you know where you see that most clearly is with, um, bands, right? Because they're so visible. Yeah. Imagine public. being the, the drummer for, yeah, you know, basis. How many times that yeah. happened where a band, yeah, they break up crushes together. and there's a lead singer, lead singer gets a big head. Yeah. Takes off. Every I'm going to do this on my own. And then fucking tanks. And and then yeah. their next band is dog shit. Yeah, people remember the lead singer that went off and did well, but that's like one out of twenty. Right. Nineteen times they tanked. Right. And it, it's it wasn't. I, like and that. and it, you know and it's not just the lead singer who all the time gets a big head. Sometimes it's the drummer who's jealous of the yeah, yeah, fame yeah. of the big singer, and so and like that that says something special about the drummer or the bass player who's okay playing that role like listen i've i've met a guy who's got a beautiful voice and can do something i can't do yeah. and even if i am part of this synergy i'm okay not being the guy yeah. and like so that was like the, the discussion and we were talking about mind pump and then the warriors you know, the, got the irony is uh for us none of us want to like really want to seek to be the guy if anything that's the least appealing part no i, and I, I, <laughs> I, I would love to not to be the guy nobody knows i told him i <laughs> yeah, said that's no, what i said i would prefer i told him through that i was like there was a time when i i remember at the meeting where i told i told who that. i told you guys who everybody was in the oh, warriors yeah, 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 you yeah, know yeah. 
And I said, I, you know, I didn't put myself as Steph Curry or the, the guy who everybody else thinks is the best guy. Like, I, Draymond, that's because of who I am. Like, mm -hmm. that's, I like that personality better. And I'm okay not if the whole world doesn't think that I'm the best or I'm the well, greatest. Well, the reality is, too, if for every, you know, Kobe Bryant or whatever, there's a team owner or a billionaire that, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that nobody knows. That's, that's right. the real fucking game. That's where it's at. It so, is. And yeah. I was making that's the case I was making is organizations and leadership and like people just they get so caught up in the 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 fame of the person who gets all the the hype and the attention. It's like Steph Curry and Dr they all don't work if it's not for Steve Kerr. And no, Steve man. Kerr doesn't work if it isn't for Bob Myers, who's no. the owner. And like it's a top down organization. That's why it's so rare to have a, a team that really works it, that works well when they succeed. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? When yeah. they're really crushing, it's hard to find a team that really works. And well. that it's you know it's and this is why I love good team sports is you, there's this movement in his generation and younger that that look at NBA because in the last two decades the NBA began uh, building what are called super teams. This has never happened before in the history of basketball, where big big players, the best players on the team, started trading up to be all on each other's teams oh, and yes. getting meeting afterward. And and that didn't happen before. And in, in the back in the Jordan days. There's Jordan, there's Larry, there's Magic, right. and they stay with that team their whole career. Yeah. There's loyalty. And yeah, and they're like that. Where now it's like buddies, guys are like, let's get together and we'll go win a champion. And the, the best of the best is adding on. And then other guys going, oh. Now, does that work? So it does sometimes work. And it works a lot, actually, because they are so good. But every once in a while, you have a team like the Warriors who, who are far. They built their guys. They yeah. were 19-year-olds. That we developed in, in a culture, none of them are, well, I mean, they've become superstars, yeah. but none of them were bought. Yeah. And they were built in our system, and they win. Yeah. And you plus, know? if you look at it, like, from this standpoint, like, you get that superstar, okay, which they exist. How rare is that to find and combine the right ones or your odds of having a superstar and then having a team that supports it and all works together really well. And you see this I happening. I think your odds are better with Right now you're seeing ones. this in the NBA. Right now you're seeing it with the the Nets uh, that have done that. They've gone out and got three massive egos and superstars. You see that with the Lakers this year. They've gone out and done that. Is you know, That's the team. The, 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 the new way of the NBA is like, go find three all-stars, put them all on the team, and see how they work out. And it's just rare to, for it to really mesh well because they're all used to being the superstar. And that it takes a very special person to be a superstar, but then also be able to be okay with taking a back seat. You ever mm -hmm. read about uh, like effective, uh, like like these um, what are they called? Navy SEALs or Army Ranger groups, the real effective ones. If you ever read about how they do operations. They sometimes someone else will lead, everybody yeah. else gets behind, and they know they work yeah, together they instinctively. It. It's not like this big ego no, thing, no, and it works, and it's it works like an understanding. Unit. Yeah, it's like the group mind, it's that group flow that that you know we've we've heard all the time, like Stephen Kotler and all them, you know, kind of bring up. Like, yeah, if you can get into that group flow, you have even more of an advantage over like somebody that's an individual. Totally. Well, it's, it's so funny to me because so many people say they want to win. Um, but do you really? But yeah, exactly. But they they care more about themselves winning than getting the, the accolades team, from the it. Exactly, like they want to win really bad. Like, I I want to win. You know I how many people would rather be on a third place team but be the best person on that team than be on a first place team but be like the third best person on that team? Well, so did you hear? Did yeah. you hear when he was he was leaving? That's what he was teasing me about. It was like Adam would rather lose. But play the game well and and be a loser than 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 win. He misunderstood you, didn't he? Well, you're no, like, I, no. I, we actually, you're more likely to win. That well, way, but, yeah. yeah, more. But there's truth to that. Like I, I would, I would rather play the game in a pure way and the way that I think it should be played as a team than to go out and buy three of the best guys and ride their coattails and there's no real chemistry going on. It's just that they're so good, they dominate. Yeah. Like I would rather lose. I would rather lose, but be great together and 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 enjoy that because I'm a purist in the game. And yeah. so, yeah, he was making fun of me because of that. I'm just like, that's the difference between you and I. Like that's And that's the reason why you're broke right now. Exactly. <laughs> 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 Ouch. Truth. <laughs> Zing. That's why you're borrowing your the, mom's the, car, bro. The cold <laughs> shade of truth. He made oh, a uh, milk. Oh, shit. <laughs> Damn. Hey, Doug, uh, I, I sent you a clip. He's a good sport, though. I, can I want you to pull this up. I don't know if you're familiar with this guy, Justin, but he was a Russian kettlebell juggler. Oh, yeah. And he's I've so, seen videos. so strong. 
Yeah. He's so strong, it doesn't make any oh, sense. Oh, I think I've seen this guy before. Bro, his, what's his name? It's Valentin a, Dicool. What is yeah, it again? Yeah, Valentin Dicool. Dicool. Valentin Dicool. Watching him do this has actually made me... Remember when Justin and I were doing that toss back and forth? I think it was his Bro, videos. He's, yeah. he's, he juggles. These are 75 kilo kettlebells. Damn. Okay, so what is that? 160 pound kettlebells uh -huh. or something like that? Something like that. Is that really what he's juggling? He, 75 kilo kettlebells. And look at... Yeah. And, yeah, I don't know if you need to fast forward, Doug, to the part where he's actually... Messing with them, but he's like this famous. This, this is 1985. Guy. Oh, yeah. He's oh. the same guy that does the. It's almost like a. Uh, I mean, it's like a cannonball, yeah. basically, like, but it's like, yeah, like a 200 outfit. pound. Well, maybe maybe this isn't the guy. Cannonball, so. and he does these like tricks, like you, like you'd seen some performers do where they have like a ball and they kind of roll it across that's, their shoulders. That's 75 kilos, bro. That's like 100, yeah. 160 pounds in each hand, and he's just throwing them around like they're like the 20 pounders. It's insane to me. Wow. Yeah. How strong some people can be with their yeah. Yeah, here it is. Yeah, this is the same guy. <laughs> what is that? That's like a You know how heavy that thing is yeah, too? That's like 130 pounds. He's throwing pound. it up like it's like a, one of those balls at, at Chuck E. Cheese or something. Yeah. And he's like catching it on his neck. That's sick. Yeah, you know, I love it's, the I, I really, impressive really impressive as hell. Dude. Yes. Bro, you you know how crazy that move right there is where he's like throwing it up over his head? You know, you if he look at that, look yeah, at that old school barbell right there. On his, uh, that yeah, barbell right there is two hundred and something pounds that he's swinging around his body like that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Well, like, imagine the core strength you got to have right sense, there to do that. Right well, there. imagine wrestling this guy. You know what I mean? You show up to his house, you can take his daughter out. Did date. he do anything he like makes that? Him like a little baby. Did he actually do? Obviously, this is pro obviously his main gig. But did he you, play a sport or do anything to express the kind of strength that? Well, he this was it. He was a yeah. circus strongman. Now, remember, Russia, he's Russian. Russia has a long history of these types of kettlebell athletes and strength athletes. I don't know how much he's about to deadlift right here. I think it's some yeah. insane amount of weight. I've never seen anybody perform, though, like strength feats like this. This is so unique. Because yeah, you I make it look like, you know, a, a regular circus performance. You know, he has, like, all this performative act with it. You know, not just like, oh, I'm lifting heavy and I'm struggling through weights. It's like he makes it seamless and smooth and makes you feel like, like, you know, you have no strength at all. Yeah, Doug, what's do we know how much he's deadlifting or about to lift right here? Is there is there any way to put subtitles on there? because uh let me see here there may be some details in here yeah let's look, look it up because he's doing these feats of strength and you know it's funny if you look at him he's not like bodybuilder ish or whatever no but, but he, he looks, looks strong yeah you could tell yeah like he, if i seen this dude at the beach <laughs> yeah no. i'd be like you don't oh. want to kick sand on that guy no. <laughs> yeah this guy's pretty uh pretty insane It'll so he break all your bones this you said this is russia right here he's a rush yeah he's russian and he's so the story goes he's a circus acrobat and he start and he broke his back when he what was seventeen. What is he doing right there? He's putting like a oh thousand pounds God. on himself right now. Oh, uh, and then somebody stepping. Oh, is he it. doing a bridge? Yeah. yeah. Oh my God. He said the pyramid. I've seen notes here, and I don't know how, how accurate it is, is but it says that up? Yeah. the pyramid in the end is supposed to total nine hundred kilograms, which seems whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, that's crazy. Two thousand pounds. That's crazy. He's yeah. got two thousand pounds on him right now, holding a bridge. Holding a bridge. Wow, I think, he, yeah, let's see you do that, Brett Contreras. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, good guy. Is he on his head? He, he was. On his head he, there. he started like in a uh, what is that position called? It's wow. like a, it's a bridge. It's like a full wrestling Dude, bridge. That's insane. So let's listen to this, right? So I pulled him up here. He's there's a video of him doing a 990 pound squat, a 572 pound bench press, and a 1,012 pound deadlift. Wow. I mean, just insane. There's videos of him squatting a car. So they'll put a car in a ramp and put it on his back, and then he'll squat it. Wow. Yeah. Really crazy. You know what's interesting about these? these like strong men or strength athletes that did these kind of weird feats of strength is because they often didn't compete in these like powerlifting or Olympic lifting federations. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes their feats of strength kind of get lost uh, to history. Yeah. But like, I, cause those numbers you just write off. If he was like a competitor in, Oh like, yeah. I mean, he would be very well known. He would. Those are but, some record breaking type numbers. But there, but then they do lifts that you, you know there's really no competition for, right, like right. a bent press. Well, or like that what bridge. he just did right there. He did a bridge with a thousand pounds on him. Like, yeah. There's no competition for or that. Or juggling with 160 pound kettlebells. Yeah. And what's cool about these people, and I did this a long time ago. I remember years ago I bought a bunch of books. I can't remember the name of the site. It was like old school strength or old school strong man. I don't remember what it was. And I was, I was in my early thirties or late twenties 
And I had just read this article about Eugene Sandow, right? So he's the he's the the guy that they modeled the Mr. Olympia trophy out of, right? Yeah. And I read about a bent press, one arm bent press he did with over three hundred pounds. So for people that know what that is, it's this modified one arm lift. So you're lifting it in the air, and it's one arm and it's a long barbell, which requires balance and stability and ridiculous three hundred pounds. Before this old time strongman, that's that's where I bought him. Yeah. Before protein powders, creatine, definitely before steroids. And I remember thinking, I wonder if I could learn anything from these old, you know, strong men, right? Mm -hmm. Like how did they train? What mm -hmm. did they do? So I bought all these obscure books that they wrote and I would read, read about their training. And one thing that I found in common is they all lifted weights or did their strength sport or whatever frequently. And yeah. they almost never trained to failure. They, they basically treated all their lifting practice. like skill yeah, yeah. Like practice all everything time. was a skill it's funny because i you know looking at i had the same kind of process where i looked back into history and was trying to see all the the strongest guys and what they did and all that stuff and i think and i'm not sure that this kind of sparked it for me it was pretty embarrassing actually that um this was a thing but uh back in the day when i had to go through all these like youth groups and church groups and all this stuff they had like a, a strength street team you know that came oh, I, in i remember that with this like what? purple yeah, jumpsuits they ripped the phone book and then yeah. they bend the bar with their teeth bend like, the bar with their teeth yeah, yeah, yeah. they rolled like a what? frying yeah, pan that was like a church thing for sure oh my god i would have loved that yeah, oh yeah. bro it was so you would have totally i went there and i would have been like, in. yeah you know and uh yeah it was the whole the thing is like this whole evangelist like sort of a um, you know thing I bet it's the it. same group of guys I saw that's interesting yeah because you're nailing everything that they did for me too I saw the yeah same. Wow. and it, it it's just kind of funny but you don't really see that anymore as a thing except for like on some stupid show like American I uh, 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 what do you call it America's Got Talent or something yeah like yeah like yeah. you'll see some of this kind of you a know stuff. that's one of my favorite YouTube videos that we have when Sal taught us how to rip the phone book oh yeah I yeah. love that dude that, that was a good time that was such an exciting day for me because I had you've seen I've seen that trick forever yeah yeah. You know, and the fact that it's definitely there's like a trick to it to be able to You have to, do to have it. the right technique. Yeah. You also got to be strong. And if you yeah. don't know how to do it, you ain't you, gonna do you're it. never going to no, do it. No. I don't care how strong you are. And so it's like, that's why it's one of those cool tricks that if you know how to do it. Yeah, you, you can, still have to be strong. Yeah, yeah. But, and I've done the fat, the old school. You can't find them anymore, but the fat. Remember the old school phone books? Yeah. When I was 16. I we have kids right now listening going like, what is a phone book? Yeah, <laughs> This is how you used to find phone numbers, yeah. kids. Uh, you know what, though? Those things at grandma's house. These yeah. strength strength feats kind of go, they, they go back uh, a couple generations of my dad's side of my family. So when I went to go visit my dad's parents in Sicily when I was 12, I think I was 12 or 13, and I was just starting to kind of get into like strength stuff. I, I didn't work out in the backyard yet. My parents still didn't let me touch the, the, the barbells, but I did have these little cement dumbbells in my room and I was always infatuated with strength. So when I go there, my dad is, they're telling me stories of my dad and oh, your dad one time did this and he did that and your grandfather. And then they had this heavy ass wooden chair that my grandfather sits on and he has it in his garage. I guess it's like a garage. And he goes, my dad, so my grandfather's dad, my great-grandfather, right? He goes, do you see the bite marks on the ba back of this? And I look, I'm like, oh my God, there's bite marks on the, the, the top of the back of this heavy-ass wooden chair. I'm like, yeah. And he goes, my father used to, he, when he, we had people over, he would, this was something he would do. He would bite it and lift it with his teeth. <laughs> <laughs> he left the chair in the air. Really? That yes. was a common strength thing was like, you know, biting things and being able to like, you know, hold a ton of weight in your mouth. Like yeah. that. And, and you figure out later. Why is, why, why uh, is that such a popular thing? It was uh, just, it, it was. That's sort of like your last line of defense, right? Because you, you were showing off the strength of your teeth and your mouth and your neck. It required skill. I know, but doesn't that just, of all the things that you could show off of strength wise and all the muscles oh, in the I body, no like, the, like, the, I know. Why? I have, that's just a weird one, right? I have no idea. It's, it's weird. Weird, but also if you think about it, I mean, it's it's a last thing to brace and support. You know, I it, guess it's very primal too when you think about of it. Of course, yeah. You know but like, saying? feel how tense that makes your entire body when you like clamp your jaws. It was down. it was an old school full wood chair, and it was heavy as shit. I don't know how he did it, but he and there's all these teeth marks on the back. And then it was like that's funny. It was like six months ago. We we're at my parents' yeah. house, and my so my dad now has got arthritis up and down his body. He's got pain, this and that, but it's still in his blood, right? He still likes if it comes up. Trust me, if he ever comes in here and visits, 100%, he'll go over to the kettlebells and he'll ask one of us which one's the heaviest and try and do something. It's just mm -hmm. what he does. Mm -hmm. We were at my parents' yeah. house 
and I was having him tell these stories to my son. The apple doesn't fall far from the tree. I know, right? <laughs> and I, 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 he was telling my you son. Probably, you all know, he'd he probably break down to a wife beater too. Yeah. <laughs> Swear to God, I'd fall uh, over, bro. I would uh, fall over. No, he doesn't wear one. <laughs> pulls his wife, pulls his shirt off down yeah. to a wife beater, then no, goes and yeah. grabs the key well. Well, no, we were at my parents, <laughs> and we were. I was trying to get my son's, you know, interest in the spark. He could care less, but I'm trying to, you know. So he's telling these stories. And my dad goes, so he's got a heavy like dining room chair. My dad says, Do you, can you lift the chair from the bottom leg with just your arm straight? And my son's like, that's impossible. There's no way. So he's down there and he's trying to lift it or whatever. I go down there and I try to do it. And I'm like, oh man, I'll strain something if I do it. And I said, dad, I, I don't think you should, because I know you're going to try doing this. I said, don't do it. Your back hurts. Go, no, no, it's no big deal. I do it right now. He fucking did it. He lifted it in the air. My son was like, his mind was like blown. So till this day, my son's anything that happens, my son's like, can no no do that? Did uh, <laughs> did Domenico say anything to you? I I've been razzing him when he comes into training. Do you really? Does he, have you said he has he said anything to you? No, not really. Uh, yeah, he's so, pretty good with that. He's so quiet, dude. He comes in and he like Bro, plugs into his plugs into. He's his a stuff. level four. That's it. One always. to ten, he's a four. You can't. I, and that, my, my nothing goal, will bring him out of that. My goal since you <laughs> said that is I'm always trying to get kind of a rise out of him and see if I can get like him to to yell or get some excitement out of him. It's yeah. you can't. Nope. But uh, so he's been coming in and every time he comes in and I know he's getting ready to train with Serene and Serene doesn't know because I don't I don't talk to her about this stuff very often and uh, obviously I'm sure because of the position that I have in Mind Pump and her working for us at the YouTube and doing so that she I don't know if she's picked up on it if I'm just kidding or being playful or oh, not right. so she she come in after he's already been here or whatever and he's sitting down on the couch and I'll say to her I said. Hey, uh, you know, I was talking to Domenico and he was telling me that, you know, the workout sessions have been really easy. You know? <laughs> and you can see like, she's trying to process it like, oh really? You know? And then he's over there like, and the, I thought I'd get him to like, no, no, no. He's just like, no, uh, no, I, I didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then I think that. she's like trying to process like, is Adam like critiquing my training? And we're like, no, no, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So uh, inside I'm over here cracking up. So he's funny, but he you can't get him to go beyond that. Bro, he can, four. he really could care less about that kind of, I mean, he does it cause I, I sign him up for it and he, you know, whatever, but he could care less. And I think that's part of that's good. He does not have any of the insecurities I had as, at his age. So no. I don't know if that was a good thing or a bad thing. Maybe I should have injected a little insecurity in there. Yeah. Get his ass to work out. You know, what I mean? you just gotta say a real dark joke yeah. and then walk away real quick. Yeah. I got him. No, but no. That. All joking aside, you know, I was a real skinny kid and it really affected now, me. Now, but he's he could he doesn't care. Yeah, because yeah. well, that's not his thing though, right? But oh, I mean, insecurity as a kid is just normal, Calm. right? So, are, have you guys been able to identify that within your own kids? Like, do you know what their like thing is that they have to earn? Because so that was working out for you. That was that that way for me, right? Because a skinny kid. Um, but more than likely, uh, that's not his, but there's something else. Do you I, know what that is? Do you, yeah, do you, I don't what know. What about you, Justin? Yeah, I don't know. You know, it's pretty weird because uh, they, he, he doesn't really show, I mean, he's gone on sports teams, uh, and played, even though he's got my athletic genetics, which means, you know, not great, but he'll go and do it. Um, he'll do reports and stand and talk in front of the class. Hmm. You know, his gr girlfriend's dad, I'm like, oh, he's going to meet his girlfriend's dad. Is he going to be nervous? No. He shook, you know, they shook hands and talked economics. I'm like, what? You know? So <laughs> he, he's just kind of chill. It's hard to read. You know what it is? It's hard to read him. That's what it is. Mm. My daughter, uh, she's still kind of young, but every once in a while she deals with the girl kind of drama, you know? Yeah. She just doesn't tell me a lot. I think she tells her mom. Yeah. But that's kind of normal. But I don't know. How about yeah. you, Justin? Do you see any? So, uh, I mean, you mean like what they struggle with the most? Yeah, well, they're, they're, I mean, you know, we all had insecurities growing up. Yeah, right? yeah, Everybody yeah. has insecurities. And as dads, I mean, obviously mine's so young, so Max hasn't, this hasn't manifested yet, but it will one day. Yeah. And, you know, and I, and obviously I want to be able to help him through that process. He has to go through it, but I want to be able to guide him if I can as a father. And so I'm wondering, you guys being fathers with kids well, that are older. Yeah, I think the, something I, I guess I would, I would, identify as more of like just trying to be liked by by everybody too much like you know like in, in terms of uh being the the life of the thing if somebody if one person is like annoyed with him or it like just ruins his day oh, i was kind of oh. like that i you always know, wanted to like, be like this the, the, i'm like why do you care party, dude and everybody liking me yeah so that's normal so yeah so ethan's kind of like he because he's so outgoing and like wants everybody's attention like he'll do stuff to just like just when nobody's kid, looking he thinks like everybody's watching him like right, right. everywhere we go and i'm like dude nobody's checking you out right now. <laughs> like you're fine you can just be normal you know? like, hey, hey you know <laughs> dude, take it down he's a yeah. good kid too he's a really sweet kid oh yeah he's yeah. The, he's he's the best but uh yeah and then everett's more just like 
he's just so hard on himself. He just like keeps saying like negative like thoughts about like whatever it is he's doing. He's just he's never good enough. I'm bad at this. Or yeah. this. And I'm like, dude, you just smoked everybody. Like, and and it's because one kid beat him. You know, oh. and so he's like, I'm I'm just I'm second. You know, and I'm, I wonder I'm where like, he gets that from. Oh, it's weird. That's weird. I, I have no <laughs> idea. That's a weird thing. Dude, and I have no idea why he's outside just, you know, punching the shit out of a tether ball to where his like whole arm is black and blue. And just because one kid beat him, you know, it's weird. Now, yeah. what would you guys say is yours? This is, I'm going to make you guys be vulnerable right here. Which one, which would you say is your, your biggest insecurity that you've had to work on the longest as even as like an adult today? Whoa, wow. Like something that I had a lot. Oof. That's oh, well, I mean. we all have had a lot, yeah, right? Yeah. But there's 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 ones like there's ones that I I could say that I I had I've worked through and I think and I think I don't think they ever leave. They I think they will always revisit. Yep. Um, but there's ones that I feel like I have, uh, you know, dare I say, mastered. I feel like I, I see them or coming. Just change the relationship with it. Okay, mm -hmm. it's a better way to mm -hmm. say that. Yeah, because it doesn't. But then there's well. other ones that are still hard that you that you're you face with it, and maybe you catch yourself yeah. even slipping into that pattern and stuff like that. Do you guys know what those are for you? Do you recognize that? Well, the the, the earlier ones was obviously the body image stuff, but I do and I do feel like that's still kind of always there. Mm -hmm. But I've definitely developed a much better relationship around it, where it used to really be a a big problem. You know, now I would say the one that I'll always struggle with, I don't know if always, but I'll still struggle with, is just being, and this is probably common for parents who care, is being a good dad. I think, mm. you know, you make decisions, especially when you make hard decisions. That's a good one for you because you've you've shared about that off air before yeah. and we've talked about- It's just, you know, you do something and maybe you punish your kid or something happens yeah. and then you, like, shit, I should have done that better or I didn't pay attention. Mm hmm and you're just questioning whether or not you did a good job. I've, I've heard lots of parents say that, you know, that's kind of a normal one. But that one's one that now still, I still kind of always, you know, try to work on. Especially after I got divorced. That was a big one. The, you know, yeah. the guilt of putting my kids through that was uh, something that I had to, you know, really work through. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but, I mean, it's, again, I, I mentioned those things because those are like two very good examples of what I've had to work through, you know, forever was just like the, the self-talk of like, I actually am really good at this and I, I acknowledge this about myself versus like, you know, sort of this chip on my shoulder that I, that everybody thinks I suck and I have to like work my way out of that, mm -hmm. you know, like that, that's been a real uh, weight on my back like my whole life. So, and you know, between that and then, um, again, making sure like everybody's cool and everybody's like happy and, you know, <laughs> like I, I struggle with that too. You know, yeah. I just want to, I want to, uh, you know, I, I just, I avoid drama because, you know, certain environments like I grew up in, like, I just don't like that. You, you must enjoy it when Adam and I get in big ass arguments. It's yeah. great. It's my favorite <laughs> thing actually about this business and hanging out with you guys. <laughs> he's, he's sitting over there going, oh, fuck. Uh, oh, fuck. I guess, like, you know, how do we get out of this? Here we go. What, oh, do I got to turn it up? Do I got to like mellow it out? <laughs> what, what about you, Doug? I mean, is there anything for us to look forward to when we turn 80? Does it all go away? Or what is it? Uh, what's it like up there? <laughs> it doesn't all go away. I can guarantee you that. <laughs> it doesn't ever go away. Yes, no, so. it doesn't. I mean, Justin, I you know, resonate a lot with Justin's type yeah. of uh, issues, uh, if you want to call them issues. Uh, again, it's this whole thing about, you know, making everybody happy. I want everybody to be happy like me, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, perfectionism has always been the thing that really dogged me. Mm -hmm. And I had this standard. If it wasn't perfect or the best, it wasn't good. Yeah. You know, it was, it was, had to be the best or it was all or nothing. Yeah. yeah. And uh, of course that would also oftentimes cause me to be, you know, paralyzed. I couldn't act because I wanted it to be the best. So I just wouldn't do anything that, at all. That standard yeah. is impossible. Yeah. So I've had to let go of a lot of that, but I still have some of that, uh, that hangs around. Um, but you know, again, I can be very good at something. And I still don't feel like, uh, you know, I'm really now how great. good are you guys at uh, catching it in the moment? Like when it, when it, or is it normally like something you still have to like go like, Oh fuck today. Oh, I did yeah. this. You know, or, I feel like if it's an insecurity, or somebody has to tell you, you I know? feel like it's if it's work, in a, dude, if you're always. still working on yeah. it, it's, it's almost never in the moment. It's always yeah. after like, Oh, and you think about it after, you know, until you develop a good relationship with it, then you can catch it in the moment. But until that happens, I think you do shit. And then later, yeah. Why did I do that? Oh. I think if you can become aware of it and then really kind of keep that awareness at the top of your mind, yeah. You can start, you know, I identifying so. it at, at the time it's taking place. Yeah. Yeah, and you, then you have some tools to kind of let go of that and, and move yeah. forward. Yeah, yeah. When you work on it, you identify it more. Yeah. Right. And I think that it, it's got to be intentionally like for me, I have to constantly like think about 
uh, how to improve, you know, personally on certain things. And then it, and then it's more obvious when it happens and you can like, you can address it as it's happening, but it takes like those reps to be able to do that in the moment versus later on, like, you know, Doug saying like, I will think about it later and be like, ah, oh, you know, like I wish I would have like done something a little bit differently with that. Yeah. But what, uh, what about you, Adam? Uh, you know, and I, I agree with what Doug said that I think I do think that uh, I can catch not always, but I think I catch it real time. I'm I'm aware of it when it happens because it still does, and it's the success, money, and education thing for me. It's like because I didn't go to college, because I didn't, I came from not having a lot, and that was a lot of where my drive came from. I still catch moments where, and it, it tends to happen when I'm with really educated people or really, really financially successful people. And if I'm in a group like that, um, I'll, I'll have this, which is totally out of character for me if I'm with you guys or people I'm comfortable with, I will find myself inserting uh, my my accolades you know, like, oh, like you're, you're like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like you'll uh, like no need to like reveal my, my bankroll or things that I've done and had success like you with. you have to prove that you're right. You're like, like, like there's there. no, like I would never mm -hmm. do that in a normal conversation with a friend or people I know really well, but there are moments when I find myself in that environment and because I don't have the education, because I have a different pathway towards success and everything like that, you know, the, the thing that's the insecurity that's happening in my mind is that. Oh, these these guys probably think I'm just some dumb tattoo gym guy, and I'm not really smart. I'm not really successful, and so there's that part that rears its head and makes me want to say that stuff. And so in the past, it would happen, and then later on that night, I'd be like, "Fuck, that was so stupid." Where now, <laughs> yeah, I actually I can catch it. Like yeah. someone they say something, and I'm about to say it, and I go, "What?" Yeah. And in my head, I'm having that conversation, going like, "There's no reason for me to tell this person." Yeah. That. One, they don't care. Two, I, I'm going to sound like a douchebag probably. And three, it's really just my insecurity. You know what? It, it's also because you can see it in other people. You ever talk yeah. to somebody and they just they'll start doing that, and you'll be like, "Oh, why? You know, you don't need to do that." Yeah. Oh, yeah. totally. Like, calm down. I so you know what's funny? So I I never had it with money. Um, that was never something that I was insecure about. But with the education, I was. Yeah. When I was around really highly educated people, I would sometimes feel that way until I owned my wellness studio and the vast majority of my clients were extremely educated surgeons, doctors, or executives. And because I trained them so long and I had developed this great relationship and at some and they would ask me lots of questions about nutrition, the human body. I'd have surgeons asking me about muscle function and biomechanics. And then they would always compliment me and say things like, man, you're the most, they would say things like, you're, I can't believe you didn't, you know, go to college for this or whatever. Anyway, it boosted my confidence and made me feel to the point where then it became cool. Like, I, oh, I can't, I hope they asked me, you know, where I yeah, went to yeah. school. Cause then I'd make something up and I'd say, you know, university it's a, of you it's know, an Google. It's an interesting, <laughs> it's an interesting dichotomy because there's these, uh, there's these parts that you look at it. And that's a great example of like, that's also something that probably drove you to, being very intelligent and successful in that arena because you there's a part of it that was probably driven by insecurity so it's hard right sometimes yeah. the things that uh that are our greatest insecurities are also our greatest motivators in getting us further ahead in life mm -hmm. and then it's like you now how do you balance that how do you use that as a superpower right like patrick but david talks about this in his the, the his next five moves that i talked about in the show the other day like learning how to use that to power you forward, but then also uh, being aware of it. So don't it let does, it become dysfunctional. Right. So, you know, don't identify as it, you know, mm. recognize that it's a, it, it does put a little bit of a chip on your shoulder. Use that chip to, to, to use energy to propel yourself, but then don't identify as that very similar to like, you know, we have with people with body fat, right? So somebody who is, it's okay to look at yourself and know that you've put a lot of body fat on and your choices that you've done mm -hmm. have got you there. And so you have this motivation to fix that and change that's that. not your identity. But don't identify with it and see yourself as I'm fat. Yeah. Totally. You know, no, I made a lot of bad decisions in the past that got me to this place. I'm going to use that as fuel to make the right decisions. And that can be very powerful, but then not, but being very careful to not identify with being the fat person. One of the great, one of the biggest values I got out of training people was, you know, when you help other people with their insecurities with something that you are confident in, right? So I'm your trainer. I'm very confident in being able to help my client through their insecurities of being overweight or not feeling worthy and all that stuff. And we talk about this on the show uh, all the time. Helping them do that allowed me to self reflect on my own. Mm -hmm. So it's like, it was so rewarding. Like the personal growth I got from training other people, 
I, I, I can't quantify it. it was tremendous. And then the personal growth from a podcast, because you're talking about this stuff, it's being recorded. Yeah. You mm-hmm. could watch it later. Yeah. Imagine, okay, so you talked about times when you would sit down and talk to people and feel like you had to insert like your success. Imagine if all that was recorded and you could just watch it later. Yeah. How like how obvious it would be. Oh yeah. Like talk about what a powerful tool. Oh, hundred percent. Would be right. That's uh, what's it? Black Mirror had that right. Oh, Where you could like recap all that oh, stuff yeah. for the day and yeah, everything. Yeah, like yeah. Hey, speaking of 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 obesity and all that stuff, have you guys heard about this blockbuster weight loss drug that is? They cannot meet demand right I've now. I've heard about it. What's it called? Do you know? Uh, the Wegovi is the is the name of the I think the brand name of the drug. Is okay. it legit? It apparently it works. Okay, oh. so so okay, so, let's, so here's the deal. Where's okay. the catch? Where's okay. the catch? No, there's always well, first of all, no drug comes. You grow out. a tail. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you lose all your body fat. You may grow a yeah. tail. You also <laughs> die. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. No, I okay. All medications, all drugs are going to come with their own, you know, and they call them side effects. They're just effects. So, but they're unintended or undesirable effects, right? They all have them. But if you compare so far, so I've done my research on this. If you compare this drug to other weight loss drugs that have been approved, it blows them out of the water. Blows them out of the water. So the average weight loss for people who use this particular drug, and it's a once a week sub-Q injection, sub-Q being in the skin like insulin, right? So once a week, 15% of their body weight lost. So it's like 30 pounds over the course of a year or two. It's a long-term drug, meaning you take it as long as you see value in it. It's not a stimulant like Fen-Fen or anything like that. Now, side effects could be things like nausea and... So what, you know, what's the mechanism? What is exactly is, is going so on? So it's it- an agonist for... I'm going to pull it up. There's a hormone that it's attaching to the same receptors as a particular hormone um, called... Let me look it up real that quick. That has to do with appetite? Yes. Yes. Is it like CLK then where like you, you take CLK and it's supposed to it's so supposed it's, to artificially trigger that to make you think you're full before you're full? Kind of. So it's a peptide hormone molecule known as semaglutide. So this was previously approved for uh, diabetes, type 2 diabetes. Now, this new version is a once a week injection made for losing weight. So that's basically what it what it's for, and it's it's and the other ones were oral, and you had to strict guidelines. This you can inject, no big deal, crosses the blood brain barrier. So what it does is it 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 agonizes, or otherwise, or in other words, attaches to the glucagon like peptide one receptor, uh, which is so it's a glucagon like pe- peptide one receptor agonist. So GLP one is a hormone naturally released in the gastrointestinal tract in response to nutrient intake. So it has multiple effects, including increasing insulin release from the pancreas, slowing down stomach emptying, and targeting receptors in the brain that cause appetite reduction. So the result is a sensation of satiety or fullness, and it lasts a long time. And again, the 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 trials came out, and it was so explain yes explain to me the difference between a uh, a peptide and a SARM. Like how are they similar and how are they different? Oh, uh, SARM. So peptides are long chains of uh, amino acids that have that that can act on receptors. SARMs are specific chemicals that are also looking to attach to receptors. I don't know the. I'm not like super privy on the chemistry. Yeah, I'll take the layman dummy version. But of I do like know that the difference. Like I, like how would how would I you communicate that to a client who's like, hey, I'm thinking about taking these SARMs. I'm also thinking about taking this peptide. What are you saying to those those people? Well, a SARM isn't going to cause 15% of your body weight lost and body fat on its own or body weight, right? A SARM can help you build muscle, but you also downregulate your androgen receptors. Testosterone will drop. They're not approved yet. This was approved. Now, check this out, okay? In comparison to placebo, the placebo group, and by the way, both groups were told eat right and exercise, whether they did or not, whatever, but that's what they were told. Placebo group lost 2% of their weight. The people taking this particular drug, 15%. Now, here's the, here's the crazy thing. The current existing anti-obesity medications, which suck, a lot of them have terrible side effects, typically will, will result in about 5 to 9% of weight loss. And this, or typically on average, about 5%. This is 15%. Wow, three times more effective. It makes people eat less which is really crazy. And it's this long-term... So here's the deal. And now there are other side effects. Yeah, it can cause nausea. It can cause some some gastric issues. If if you're predisposed to uh, or you have thyroid cancer, probably not a good idea because it can 
cause that to accelerate, but so far they're saying it's safe. Uh, I think this is the first anti-obesity drug that is has the potential to be widespread, hmm. like prescribed and used. Definitely doesn't take the place of just eating better and exercising. Of course. But when you're looking at an obesity epidemic like ours, mm. I think this is going to be one of those drugs that's like just widely prescribed. Now, oh, you're, you're overweight. Here you go. Let's see what happens. Now, there's two sides of me that I I, the, I, I see the, uh, the the investor side going, okay, I, 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 I'm bought in to what you're saying and probably smart uh, drug to have stock in. But then I have the other side of me goes like, you know, do I think that this really – is going to make a difference or make a real dent in the obesity epidemic. And that's the question I have for you guys is, does something that potentially helps uh, lose 15% body fat in a year, on, you know, body, on a, weight. A, a body weight, uh, do you think that it's a long-term solution? Do you think it will help that many people? Or do you think it'll just be another one of those drugs that bodybuilders use and stack into their cycles <laughs> yeah. because they will definitely take advantage of its benefits and put it to use? Based and, on the... So here's the deal. If right, you could, but isn't it just about like controlling your appetite? Yeah. I, don't, I don't see that, you know, any other benefit other than that, right? Nope. Like you're reducing calories. Mm -hmm. We know what happens when all you focus on is reducing calories. Yep. So inevitably, you know, it's going to slow your metabolism you, down. Well, like, no, you can't see. Here's the deal. To that, to you, that point, though, there, that, that was one of the things I, I actually thought that I was very pro about with the ketogenic diet or the carnivore diet was I noticed my appetite was dramatically reduced, or at least me. That was my experience. I was not. Yeah, but yeah, here's the difference. Here's too. the difference, though. That requires you right. to make the decision. But my, what I was trying to say is that there is value in that, right? There is some value in some, sure. whether it be a drug or a way of eating right. that actually yeah, If you just, don't have control, I think it is. There right. Is value there. If it can but. tamp down the, because you got to think. This that just it, makes you eat less. Yeah. There, That's it, all it is. Yeah. If it it can doesn't do make that. you eat differently. Right. So you can still the, eat the garbage. Behaviors are it doesn't make you exercise. Still be there. You can't compare it to changing your lifestyle, right? You, you can't compare that. But here's the reality, and this is the sad reality. Uh, getting people to change, to permanently change their eating habits and to exercise consistently and regularly forever, this is one of the hardest uphill battles of all time. So will this drug make a huge impact? Yes. Is it going to be as good as... I think, yes, it can make a huge impact. Is it as good as changing your lifestyle? No, of course not. Not even close. But if you're looking at 15% reduction in body weight with obese individuals, will that start to save lives? Probably. I mean, losing 30 pounds, even if you know, you're know you just eating less, is better than nothing, right? That's what we're comparing it to, is, is yeah. nothing. Did nothing they, to this. Did they actually like survey the people and ask ask them like how they felt or did they, did they have anything around that? Or? Yeah, it's like I, like I said, in comparison to the other drugs, it's got way less negative reports and side effects. They can't meet up with, they can't meet demand. The demand is so high. Interesting. They're having supply I've never issues. even heard it's of it. It's be, that high yeah. already? Well, the company that owns the drug, no, mm. uh, is it Novo Nordisk? Mm -hmm. Okay. Their stock is now, I mean, since May, it's exploded, right? Just uh, got bought by Pfizer. Weird. Yeah, no. Um, <laughs> but, I mean, it's wild. It's Convenient. wild to look at. And, of course, like if a drug that made your appetite go down, that wasn't a stimulant, you know, that sounds like a, like, medically speaking, that's, that's probably going to be, people are going to probably like it. You know, it's probably going to work in that sense for a lot of people. But I don't think it's going to solve the problem. The, the problem is far deeper than that. It's not just not, you know, eating less. We know that. Yeah, yeah. We talk about it all the time. Yeah. Anyway, pretty wild. I, uh, full disclosure. Something to pay attention to, for full, sure. Full disclosure, I invested in the in the company because I saw what the drug was doing. I saw the, the potential. And I said, okay, well, um, this this could be a big a blockbuster. And yeah, I, I mean, I'm in on that. I'm in on the business side of it. Uh, the reality of it, though, is, I mean, I think that it's people's behaviors that have to be changed. And if this helps, which I'm sure it will, there'll be some people. There's all, and that's, you know, there's always exceptions to the rule of stuff like that, too. Sometimes, like, changing to this specific diet, it was all it took to get this person to fall into yeah. better behaviors. Well, and in so, emergency situations, right? right? Like, right. we had said that about, like, bariatric surgery and things that, like, people have done. Uh, you know, in terms of like a life threatening situation where we can help and intervene, you know, sure. But like, again, to the behavioral patterns and things, this doesn't address. No, for it to get FDA approved, this has had to have been around for a minute as far as the. Well, the drug itself the has been trials around for a while, and everything, yeah. but it was an oral version and it was for diabetes. This is now approved for weight loss as a once a week 
sub con, sub Q injection. Oh, so were they giving this to uh, uh, diabetic patients orally or, or, or every oh, day? Every day, yeah, to help for with, years already. Um, I don't know how many years, but I know it was out. Already. Oh, I wonder. I see. We need to see what the what the success was with with yeah. that for that long time. I mean, here's the deal. Okay, uh, Viagra was invented to lower blood pressure, which it kind of does. But does Viagra make its money as a blood pressure medication? <laughs> yeah. Right. So could it be a good diabetes medication? Sure. Is that why they're going to sell a shit ton of them? No. It's for the weight loss. Yeah. People want to. They want the owners. It. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. <laughs> well, I, well, I have an interesting intervention that has uh, nothing to do with like uh, any intervention kind of ph pharmaceuticals. No, this is actually a, a parasite that. Uh, We've actually heard, well, I've heard through a couple of podcasts, not sure like this is totally like uh, fact checked or not, but fighters are going. <laughs> this is like a Disney buying porn Mexico. hub. Mexico. It's not quite on that level. It's a little <laughs> bit more qualified than that uh, to, to get toxoplasmosis. What? Why? Why would they get that? Because of the aggressive nature and uh, oh, that, what, it's, what, is, what is that? So toxoplasmosis isn't that found in cat cat, poop? cat feces, right? And and this is what you know, pregnant, you know pregnant women have to stay away from it uh, because it affects the development of the baby, mm -hmm. unborn babies, um, and it, it it creates this sort of like. Uh, what do you call it? Like a, a behavior where it's like you lose fear. Yeah, you lose fear. Like everything is like super spontaneous. Like you, um, you do all this erratic behavior. So rats or mice that get toxmo toxoplasmosis, they get attracted to urine of of uh, rats get attracted to urine of cats. And they so, they become attracted to cat urine. Yeah. Uh, so they lose. There's their examples in nature on this on a few things. Yes, right? Where yeah. certain things are attracted to something that's basically going to kill them. Because that's the survival of the parasite. Because yes. the rat then goes finds cats, isn't scared of them anymore. The cat eats it. Now you've got the life cycle of the parasite. It's the same so, with the cordyceps, right? Yeah. The mushroom that uh, you know ants end up, uh, you know, walking across, and then it it basically like turns them into these zombies. They oh, walk up, that, yeah, that documentary. I remember yeah, that. they walk up to a, a ledge somewhere, and 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 the bird sees them and eats them, and then the cycle goes on. Yeah, so, that's wild. by the way, parasites are fascinating. By so the way, saying, why are people doing that? So what makes them, it must reduce their fear. It, it reduces fear, makes them more aggressive, like in terms of like not. Not being a, like have any reserves. In Does terms it like of them blunt fighting. the connection to the frontal lobe or something like that? I mean, what is it, what is it doing? I don't know that, the mechanism. Oh, uh, that's interesting. Wow, yeah. I have no idea. You know, speaking of cordyceps, I just you, thought that was crazy. That, that is people crazy. Would, it, like take willingly take parasites. You know uh, what though? Is it really crazy? Like athletes do willingly crazy shit to no, themselves it, just to win. That's why I believe it. That's yeah. why I don't think this is a, a <laughs> Disney, Disney porn, porn thing. You know, this is um, <laughs> this is more believable. <laughs> yeah, it's not that far. That was not believable when you said that. I was like, no. No way, I totally Disney is buying porno. Well, so back to cordyceps, you mentioned cordyceps. You know, cordyceps in nature has been shown to have some pretty potent anti-cancer effects. Yeah. Well, a pharmaceutical company studied cordyceps, found the portion or whatever of cordyceps that has the anti-cancer effects, concentrated it, turned it into a pharma drug. So they tweaked it to make it more potent. And it's not FDA approved. They're in, I think, phase two trial or something like that. So far, proving to be one of the most effective anti-cancer drugs that we've seen so far, based off of cordyceps. Now, is this in the real world or the metaverse? <laughs> you know, I'm practicing that because we're going to have to start saying that in the future. You know that, right? Bro. Like, you're going to have conversations. You'll be like, yo, dude, I just killed this dude, yeah. like, literally, like, two days ago. Are you here like, or are you meta? Like, real life, or did you kill him in the metaverse? Yeah, like, I got a girlfriend. You know? Yeah, yeah, right? What, yeah, I have a where? girlfriend. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> where, 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 <laughs> she's a model in Canada. <laughs> <laughs> she's, uh, <laughs> she's a model. <laughs> yeah. I feel like I used that one as a kid, too. Dude. Remember did. those Olin Mills <laughs> yeah, pictures? Yeah, yeah. I remember I found Glamour one on shots by Deb or whatever. Yeah, I found one on the ground one time. It actually was trying to like pawn that off this like, is my, hey, dude, this is my, my model girl. girlfriend yeah in i don't see her all the time she lives like up north they're like wait a minute i've seen her before at the at sears don't you, know, you hey, but don't, really though think about it for a second like we, this is around the corner for us where that is going to be yep. a, no a normal thing to say and ask in a conversation was this in the real world or in metaverse where which one was it like couldn't you tell someone a story about your day or something you did well, along so those does lines, microsoft call it something different though because i know uh no you Facebook. looked it up right so it's mesh Oh, mesh? mesh is there, mm -hmm. theirs. I thought. Oh, I thought that's not going to stick. Yeah, <laughs> the hell's that? You're, it's Microsoft a metaverse. Microsoft sucks at, at the whole. Well, so and I, and I think they both believe that they are not going to be the ones that 
own it or dominate it, but they will both be a part of something even greater that has multiple yeah, legs. Yeah, think of the so, internet. Yeah. Who owns the internet? Right. So yes. that's and that's how they envision it is not like, oh, you know, face and the people that are thinking that right now, I would never be a part of the metaverse that Facebook owns with their private. It's like they're not going to own it. They're just the first ones to start to integrate yeah. well, I heard stuff some, that we're already kind of doing, right? I heard some like a funny thing. I guess both of those platforms they don't have like they have their avatars like th that you can construct right, yeah. but they don't have legs. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, I don't have legs yet. Why? I have no legs. I don't know. What? <laughs> I just thought that was interesting. What? what? <laughs> like they they do everything but legs? Constructed that, yeah. It makes yeah. no sense. So uh, I had a conversation with my son today about NFTs. Oh, yeah. So he says, what do you think about NFTs? Oh, that's said, so funny. Did he say that because we just talked about it or no? No, he brought it up himself. Oh, random. Yeah, we were, talk we were listening to that podcast all in. By the yeah. way, freaking amazing podcast. Yeah. And they were talking about something. And then my son said, what do you think about NFTs? I said, to be honest with you, at first I thought it was stupid. But then I realized how much money people spend on like a skin in World of Warcraft right. or a, you know, some like rare axe in Minecraft oh. or whatever. I said that's essentially the same thing. And I said, and we're Dude, when we're spending app purchases are crazy. Yeah, when we're spending all of our time in the metaverse, now it makes sense that you're going to buy a rare item and it's an NFT and it's going to be in your metaverse house or on your you know avatar. Uh -huh. It makes perfect sense. The irony will be the shift from like the real to the like unreal one. Like, okay, let's say right now you you buy your clothes, right? That like normal clothes, obviously. But if you spend now 80% of your time in your room plugged into this thing, will you just end up buying a pair of cheap gray sweats and a white t-shirt and that's the only outfit you wear, but then you spend thousands of dollars on fake outfits inside? Yeah. Think about that. And then think about the companies like Viore. Like, is Viore going to have to, in, are they, do they have to start thinking right now, oh, wow, we need to yeah. create I think so. Viore NFT. Totally. It, or else what's going to happen is our, we, our business is going to start to die At when people very, care less about. Now, do you yes. think, too, as they get crazier with the designs in the meta in terms of like your outfits and whatnot, you may see a reflection of that in the real world? Of course. Oh, yeah. Right? So, like, you get a, some wild yeah, outfit a that, that, you know, like takes fire or whatever. And and then some person look, in the real world like decides to just like make look it. here. That's a, that's a look, that's look an here. interesting one. M movies were you know like big screen movies dominated money spending and entertainment. Video games surpassed them. I don't know ten years ago. Video games make more money. Video games now make movies. The video games influence movies and influence culture. Oh yeah. The metaverse. Guy, a great example. The though. metaverse will influence the real world. And at the very least, think about how brilliant of a way to market your clothes. If you're spending all your time in the metaverse. You're gonna. What are you buying? Nike, Viore. You know. You're I gonna think Viore was already on top of this. I, I just bought some Meta pants. So, <laughs> what a good point, dude. Those are my favorite. Hey, those are maybe, one of my favorite. Maybe pants. Joe's way ahead of the curve. Yeah. Dude. Did you know, by the way, you know the four hundred, uh, the four hundred million that they got from SoftBank, that was a no pitch presentation. They, that was SoftBank saying we want to give you guys four hundred. Oh million. shit! I did not know that. Four billion dollar evaluation they got. Yeah. And and you wow. know what? You know what the quote was? And this makes me annoyed because we were not in on this. We weren't there fast enough. Most of that money, his, the quote was to go to the early investors. So, you know, when people first invested in Viore, I bet you they've made like 50 times their investment. Oh, my by God. Now, which is insane. Wow. But $4 billion valuation. Wow. Yeah. I mean, we, I, I, just, what were they at when we first- came up, man. When we were with them, they were, they were valued at what? 50, 60 million maybe? It was under 100. I know that. Mm -hmm. That's it was, crazy. It was under, in fact, we have the interview where I think I might have directly asked him. I don't know if I did. Do you remember, Doug, if I asked him? I don't remember. I know I talked to, talked to him when he was in here mm -hmm. uh, about it, and I know they were under 100. I don't remember exactly where they were at. But we were, I think we might have been speculating about exactly where they were. It was under 100 for sure. I mean, I tell you what, dude, uh, good eye for you uh, for really catching on because they, they're so good to go from where they were to where they're at now. You know that you know how profitable they were early on? Yeah. This was one of the reasons why SoftBank was so like awesome about it. Yeah, yeah. Because they see that there's this extremely prof. Oftentimes when they invest, it's potential, right? Oh, we're still in the red, but here's the projections. Profitable all the way through. Very well run, very smart, and of course the products are really good. Oh, I can't take all the credit for that. I mean, that was definitely a Taylor assist when he was here for sure. That was, I mean, that was one of the qualities about him that I, I really liked was, yeah, uh, you know, I was better about that when I was younger. I'm just not like I'll be the first to admit that mm. I know I'm a an old guy who wishes he was a still in style. Like I get it, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> you know, so, like, so fuck, fuck you if you're like one of those people that like to point that out or like that. Like that's why I went classic. Very, dude. very it's aware. Old stuff okay, that very aware around. of this. Yeah. Okay?
Right? <laughs> Adam's always okay. trying to be. Ahead I'm of so aware of it that I hired somebody who was better than I was at that, but I, that I could connect with, and I was like, "Oh, that is so me when I was 20." Hey, I like scooping you into my world. Like, yeah. here, bro. <laughs> I, I don't care. And anymore. I'm resisting. The whole man bun no, thing no, didn't work out for no, you. No, I don't no. Know. Yeah, but that was. Uh, I mean, I, I just remember being a young guy like that. Who, I mean, I was on all. The, I mean, back then it was like magazines, right? I was. I had all the latest mm. magazines and was always on the up and coming, like new company that was hip or doing something different or had it in like I was I loved finding you love finding that stuff first mm -hmm. like people get it he and T Taylor was like that Taylor prided himself you never he never wanted to be the guy who was rocking what everybody else was I wanted to be the guy just like he was like he was who found something that nobody was rocking yet I wanted yeah. to be the first one right. to rock it yeah. within my group and then everybody else falls into it later and you're like yeah that's right I was the first person that you know that brought that around so I can't take the credit for that he for sure found uh viore and brought it to me and I, for of course i accepted and said hell yes i love this Let's oh they're, go. they're amazing you know Dude. speaking of 400 million dollars uh i was reading an article yes. this morning um i'm listening yeah, yeah. <laughs> rob uh, dyrdek yeah something for us four he's worth 400 million dollars oh, good dude. for him man and they, it, the That's article, man crush, the, isn't the, it? yeah, yes, he's like one of those dudes that I would totally love to hang out with. Uh, they, there was an art, the article, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> call it whatever you want, yeah, Adam. Just, yeah. just chat, <laughs> whatever. Yeah, yeah, watch he just seems like you okay. The sauna? All right, so yeah. here's a that's a, here's a good conversation around that. Like when you guys see uh, ultra famous, successful, or rich people, uh, what? What do you? What are you typically attracted to as far as wanting to hang out with them? Like, oh, you, like, I see. Right, like oh, what characteristics do you see? There's lots of you know millionaires. In oh, I like I like so so I'm an Elon fanboy for that, and it's because he bucks the the mainstream. Mm -hmm. He's weird, which and super intelligent. So I feel like if I sat down with him for a few hours, it would be one of the best conversations of all time. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, but again, he's just, he's an innovator, but he doesn't, he, he's just doing his own thing and he kind of doesn't care if what he says or does is popular or not. I mean, the guy sparked up a joint and his stock plummeted because of it on Rogan and he was yeah. unapologetic about it, you know, and that's, it's really cool. No, I agree with that. I, for me, it's always the, um, the people that are like so famous, but are just have zero fucks still like yeah. in, you know, like a Bill Murray or somebody like that yeah. has always been one of my, you know, I would just love to hang out with that dude just because you know, it's like you get so many eyes on you. You take all that in, but at the same time, you're still yourself and you're just like, yeah, whatever. This is like, I'm Bill Murray, dude. I, I do what I want. Like, I just walk into a party, say, what's up? You know, it's like there's no like all this like, oh, get away from me. You know, like these all these celebrities that think they're so narcissistic about it. Yeah, no, I agree with that. The, the article was talking about how in 2016 that uh, investors, you know, called him uninvestable. Cause he was just some skateboard punk kid. You know what I'm saying? Like, Oh, there's no, don't put any money behind this. All these ideas and stuff. So Underestimated, right? Yeah. Talk about making the wrong decision there. Guys worth $400 million. But I, I think it's along the lines of what you just said right now, Justin, is that you, he seems to me, and I don't know, cause we don't, I don't know him personally, right? We know drama I, and he speaks highly. No, of he him. seems cool. Like he'd be a cool person. You know, I'm right? glad you said that though. It's true. You don't know, you don't know these people. Yeah, yeah. I don't. Right. Could be an asshole. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, you know what made me think of that is that remember I went on that little rant about the neighbor who was, you know, rocking the Fauci sign. I know? trust them. Yeah, I trust. Really, you so, let them, you know, babysit your I'll kids. Just uh, ignore all these other things. Yeah, you, know? yeah. you just gotta be real careful with that. Like, I don't know what the guy does behind closed doors, but the the what he projects that I see, um, I tend to like. It, 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 he seems real. He seems the same guy that when he was making no money living with his parents over in Ohio or wherever he's from, he's the same as the guy who makes four hundred million. That was mm -hmm. one of the things I loved about Robin Big. I remember watching that show going like, oh, man, if I ever made it with my buddies and we made a lot of money, like this is how I'd want to You spend. wanted a fun factor. Yeah, what I would. I totally yeah. would. I would yeah, love – like, yeah. That's still – like if if there's one more it's dream – cool way to spend money. There's yeah. one more dream left yeah. in Mind Pump, it would be to build like a Mind Pump factory. Like I would still – It would be a lot different though. It would have like yeah, soft chairs. <laughs> 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 a recliner. Yeah, it definitely yeah. wouldn't have a. It definitely wouldn't totally. have a fifty foot ramp in it. You no, know what I'm <laughs> yeah. no, you're not it for doing, sure would have like an ollie a fucking flips. nail yeah. salon in there instead yeah. bro, before I before I put a fifty foot ramp and, in there these and this, days. And these and these are the four recliners that we sit on to take a nap. <laughs> and this oh, is the, you know, that sounds amazing. Here's the hair dye station. Would totally, Doug, would you be down to build something like that or what? I would. Okay, good. Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Oh, I like oh, this. I like on. that everybody's what? on the same page. Oh, on did, now. did you just sell I did. everybody? Else? I did. I Son just, of a bitch. It's closed. It's on record now. Yeah, I right, misunderstood. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. I, I underestimate your closing skills, though. <laughs> that was yeah. slick. Yeah.
Hey, I hope you're enjoying the show. Real quick, I want to talk about a one of our partners, right? Masszymes makes digestive enzymes for people interested in building muscle, burning body fat, improving their health, or improving the performance. How can digestive enzymes help you? Well, they help you break down and assimilate the food that you eat. So you want more of that protein to go to the right places. You want to help with bloat that you might get from carbohydrates. You want help digesting fats from healthy fat containing foods. Try adding digestive enzymes, but not any digestive enzyme, masszymes. Again, these are designed specifically for people like you. And because you listen to Mind Pump, you actually get a massive discount, 20% off. So here's what you do if you're interested. Head over to masszymes.com. That's M-A-S-S-Z-Y-M-E-S.com forward slash Mind Pump. Use the code MINDPUMP20, so MINDPUMP20, and get 20% off. All right, here comes the rest of the show. First question is from Sarah Beek. Is there a difference between having muscle and being strong? Oh, big difference. Yeah, you know what? You know what? I mean, they're, they're, they're connected, right? There's crossover yeah. there. So bigger muscles contract harder. So theoretically, having bigger muscles will make you stronger. However, a huge component of strength is skill mm. and the way your muscles uh, work together. So in other words... If you practice squatting and really get the form and the technique down, you can squat more weight without necessarily building bigger muscles. On the other side, you can train in a way to where you're really just focusing on the muscle and the contraction and the feel, not squat more weight, but get bigger leg muscles. Yeah. You see bodybuilders do this all the time. But they are connected. You know, Power lifters have understood now for a while that, although their goal is to lift as much weight as possible, if their muscles get bigger, that potential is much uh, higher. So it's not like they're avoiding, you know, hypertrophy for you know just for strength. And of course, bodybuilders also they know that adding weight, yeah, of course, to a certain extent, but adding weight naturally increases the tension on a muscle, and is a better signal oftentimes for bigger muscles. Yeah, strength's uh, specific to the stimulus applied, and uh, so that's what like some of the videos that I remember it was kind of fun to watch because I used to think that just a big jacked guy was had to be like the strongest yeah. guy in the gym and then you'd see just this kind of uh hard-working guy that was like a little bit you know had a gut and was uh, just you know looked like you know had had big forearms or whatever but was really understated would just outlift the guy all day long for specific lifts and and so uh you see videos of of bodybuilder versus power lifter versus crossfitter mm -hmm. versus and it's like you can see what their strengths are you know relative to what they practice the most great and great so point. that's sort of like how i started to look yeah at here's it. a good example um champion power lifter versus a champion olympic lifter both incredible strength athletes who's stronger depends on what we're asking them to do exactly. if i'm saying let's do a snatch the olympic lifter is going to crush the power lifter if i'm saying do a deadlift yeah then, or a bench press, then the power lifter is probably going to win. So there's a huge strength component. And there's also how you fire the muscles. Like here, you know, and this is a fact. You take the average person and you give them caffeine and they will be a few percent stronger. What's What happened, right, in that moment? Did their muscles grow? No, their central nervous system is firing a little harder. They're stimulated and they're able to fire more juice to the muscle to lift more weight. But their muscles actually weren't any bigger in that particular moment. So, but uh, what does this mean for the person watching right now? What should I train for? Well, if your goal is to look good and, and be healthy for a long period of time, both. They both have lots of value. Well, they both contribute both to each other yeah. too. It's, it's, uh, I mean, it's nearly impossible to build strength and not build some muscle. Right. Right. And it's nearly impossible to build muscle and not build any strength. Mm -hmm. Uh, there's some outliers where you see some extreme examples of it, but you're going to get a little bit of both. And extreme examples would be comparing the the you know bodybuilder who just won Mr. Olympia compared to the guy who just won World Strongest Man, and they probably look nothing like each other. Mm -hmm. You know, but both have a lot of muscle mass on them for sure because you're not going to be the world's strongest guy in the world and not have a bunch of muscle. Yeah. You know, yeah. I've always been really impressed with 
people that don't look like they should be as strong as they are. Yeah. It's always too. really impressive to me. We just Ma talked about this. Mike Salemi's yeah, like Yeah, we that. just talked about this. We mm -hmm. talked about Mike Salemi, and then who was the other example that we gave? I forgot who. We gave two examples of friends of ours. I don't ours remember, but he's a great example. Who you just would never guess. Oh, uh, what's his name? Uh, Jordan Syatt. There you go. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Jordan Jordan Syatt is that way, too. You just you look at him, and you'd never, and that's not, I don't mean that to be an insult at all. No, he's fit and everything. Yeah, he's a fit uh, guy. But he, he doesn't look like he well, can deadlift he, 600 he, pounds. He, yeah, he deadlifts way more than I deadlift. <laughs> I look like I should be able to deadlift mm -hmm. more than him. So I think that's just impressive when you see somebody like that. Yeah, it's, yeah. And it always stands out in the gym. I've, I've, I haven't seen it very often, but there's been a couple times where I see a dude load a bar and I think to myself, he's going to hurt himself. And then mm -hmm. I see them lift it and I'm always like, how did that guy bench five plates? He yeah. looks like he weighs 170 pounds. Or I've seen a guy deadlift uh, – almost seven plates and I swear to God he weighed like 160 pounds or something like that which was just insane. There was this guy on it was Stan Lee's I think it was like superhumans and so he was able to find sort of like really unique people out there that had like gifts in certain directions right and so there's a guy there that just looked like an average average guy and he was able to I was like deadlift almost like 900 something pounds and like he he actually like had this one feat of strength where he was uh, holding on to uh, a rope and um, I think it was like one of those ninja bikes was like, you know, full throttle, like trying to pull. And so they estimated the amount of force, you know, it took to be able to hold the bike in place. And it was just insane, like a uh, feat of strength. Yeah. So, so how do you train for strength? Typically, of course, lower reps, compound lifts, longer rest periods really focusing on the technique of the lift, really focusing on the skill uh, and of moving the weight in a stable, controlled manner. Uh, how do you focus on building bigger muscles? Focus on the muscle, the contraction, the feel, the squeeze. Reps are a little bit higher. But again, they both, there's so much crossover um, that you want to do both, even if you're in a sport that only focuses on one, right? Yeah. Even if you're just a bodybuilder, you'll benefit from some strength training. And if you're just a strength athlete, you'll benefit from some of that well, body. Well, I think that's the biggest takeaway from this conversation is you get people that identify with one or the other, and then they don't venture into the other yep. modality of training, right? So if you're somebody who all you care about is strength, uh, you're missing out if you don't train like a bodybuilder sometimes. Mm -hmm. And if you're a bodybuilder and you never train like a strength athlete, you're missing out. And I think that's most common what I see. Yep. I mean, and we're all guilty of that, right? Like either I identify as more of this type of a, you know, lifter, athlete, whatever you want to call it. Therefore, I don't do X, Y, Z lift and I don't care about this because I'm not that. But the truth is they both contribute to both sides. Next question is from L. Squai. Should a seated dumbbell shoulder press be done at a slight incline or at 90 degrees? Oh, yeah. Oh, so you know why they're asking this. Yeah. You know, okay. So you'll see bodybuilders often do an overhead, you know, dumbbell shoulder press, and the bench is not straight up. It's at a slight incline. And that's because they don't have great shoulder mobility. That's right. Yeah. That's really what it is. They, it's compensation. They don't have the ability to really get that full extension at the top. Are they both hitting the shoulders? Yes. But if you can't press directly up over your head, you should be doing things that get you to that point because that is expressing that kind of full shoulder mobility. And I would say, and you know, we've, there's some studies that show this, that good full ranges of motion under control tend to build more muscle than shorter ranges of motion. Of course, all things being equal, right? You should be able to do it. So don't hurt yourself. But you should be able to press straight up over your head and not have to be at this kind of, you know, slight incline. So now, that uh, that's being, basically it. Yeah. That being said, uh, and I 100% agree with you that that is what's going on. Uh, and you can always tell you walk by and you see someone uh, doing a dumbbell press like that. They'll either be at the slight incline or they'll have this massive arch where they actually like, I mean, I remember they're doing watching, it themselves. Yeah. I remember watching my buddies would scoot their butts at the end of the thing. And then just their upper back is against the bench. And it's like, Damn, I mean, they may as well be on it on an incline. Right. Now that being said, it doesn't mean though you can't like because I'll do this every once in a while, and I have the shoulder mobility to do it. Where I'm like, oh, I'm I'm doing shoulders today and chest, and so I'm going to do something in the middle there where it's mm. it's more of it's not a full you know like forty your your traditional forty five degree incline bench press. It's more like you know I don't know what degree I would say that is. It's more like at a sixty or a seventy five degree angle. 
Uh, so it's a lot more shoulders and I'm doing shoulders that day, but I'm also doing upper chest. And so I'll, and I never really do that. So I'll include it every once in a while. So if that's your desired outcome, there's nothing wrong with doing that. But when you see it, like to your point, it's mostly because people can't yeah. uh, do a straight up, you know, 90 degree. Well, uh, this is also, why I, I like the Viking press and, and, you know, the stuff with the land landmine as well. Uh, just because of uh, the amount of, of force that's, you know, the directional force, I can actually like push, you know, the weight and, and get full extension. So I'm up, but also like it's not quite as demanding on the shoulder joint specifically. Like it's not all the forces aren't straight down. Yeah, because of the way the angle of the bar actually is a little lighter at the top and you can move your body forward. You can move your body extension. forward into it. I think that's a great way to kind of transition you into, yes, good point. Um, you know, like direct overhead load. Oh yeah, that or a Z press. I mean, yeah. to me, that's oh, so. A Z press, so, so you have to. Right, well, I would yeah. either do a Z press or what I actually started to do when this I become I became aware because I was guilty of this. Right, I was guilty of being this bodybuilder guy who did the the arching his back like crazy. That's why I didn't do overhead press a lot. Um, as I became aware of that and started to work on the mobility and address it, one of the things I would do if I sat at a you know ninety degree bench to do a shoulder press, I'd actually take my back off the bench. So instead so of just have, your hips are on. Yeah. So that I have to, so I have to, my core has to stabilize me and I can get, I get full extension. And I, that way I don't, if it's on, if my back is touching, then I'll scoot and I'll arch, I'll cheat because mm -hmm. it's there. Whereas if it's not there and I have to stabilize, I'm kind of creating a Z press. You want to know what's funny? When I was a mm -hmm. kid, I noticed that if I focused on really getting straight up at the top, I'd get like a way better shoulder pump. Right. And it's because you have to stabilize more and all that stuff. So, you know what I actually did? I used to work out with one of my cousins and we would sit, I had a bench that was adjustable and it let you do that. But then you'd find yourself as the reps went on that you'd slide, your butt would slide forward as you started to cheat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we would take a canvas belt. Remember those belts you used to wear? They're made out of you'd canvas. you strap yourself yeah. to the bench? Around the bench, no, around you your didn't. waist. <laughs> I swear to God. <laughs> this was my solution when I was 15. That's, that's so awesome. Great. But, I, but dude, it worked because yeah. you couldn't slide forward. Yeah, yeah, that's And great. it actually worked. It got it's you like to really have to- a carnival ride. Yeah. And, but we'd drop the weight. We'd have to go way low, lighter with the weight, uh, but I got great. a way better shoulder pump. You know, those uh, those hoist machines are cool that do that too. You guys have been on those ones where you sit on it and when you press, it it, it moves. Oh, yeah, it yeah. moves kinda, you. Keep, so it kind of- gives you that you yeah yeah it kind of yeah. gives you that viking press feel in a seated position on the way the the hoist machine speaking works. of shoulder presses machines one of my favorites is the hammer strength where you kind of lay yeah. back yeah. but the handles i'm go a back fan here. of hammer strength yeah i actually like that one but you know what i have never used anything that i like as much as the viking press uh and i mean no affiliation or anything like that that's the best that, shoulder uh, machine i've ever used it's awesome. crazy to me that i mean we we've talked before on the show about um you know, things that we find that are new or think last, like that's one of the most recent things that kind of blew my mind, right? We, I've, I've that is lift, the most recent. For I've me. been lifting for a long time and yeah. I just recently started to use a Viking press and it was, I mutually, we're all in love with it. It's, it's so complimentary too yeah. to overhead press. Why can't we get you a sponsor know, it gives on you that? Such a great Can pump. you, one of you two, find a company that you really like that makes them? I tried. But oh, maybe now that we're yeah. saying the podcast, contact well, us. Let's put it out there. Yeah, yeah, that's right. If you make a Viking press, I want to sell your Viking press. So let's work out a deal. Next question is from Jalen S4. In your opinion, is it harder for the average person to gain muscle without gaining fat or lose fat without gaining muscle? Uh, <laughs> lose fat without getting without losing muscle. It's got to be one of the hardest things to do. Gaining muscle without gaining fat is really a process of just am it's I eating just a slow grind? Am I eating the right calories? Am I sending the right signal? And you can do this. Boy, losing fat without losing muscle can be really freaking hard because mm. It requires a calorie deficit, which sends this overall signal to the body that says, you probably shouldn't speed up your metabolism. You probably shouldn't add this active tissue that is burning more calories. In fact, we should pare it down right. so that we could offset this calorie deficit. So in my experience, that one's really so much more hard, so much more touchy to go. Now, if, if you're talking about a beginner- well, you're less motivated too, you know, yeah. in that direction. So yeah. I don't fully agree. Uh, I don't fully disagree either. Um, All right, let's I, hear the other side. Well, the other side to me is that this is where the genetic factor plays such a huge role is that I, I think that the grass is always greener on the other side. Mm. I think, and this is this is where I remember I talked a while back when we talked about semantotypes, and I said mm -hmm. this is one of the things why I like the semantotype conversation still is because I do think that for certain body types, it's much easier to put muscle on and it's much hard, more difficult for that person to, you know, um, lose body fat and the vice vice versa for the other person. Right. So I think it just, you're like my clients that were endomorphs, 
um, man, we touch the weights, we add a little bit of calories, and they just pile on the muscle. Ask them to lose body fat, and it's like you know the most difficult equation for them. It's yeah. just so hard for them to do that. And then the other, the opposite is true with my my skinny guy who was trying to build muscle. It's so hard for them to build muscle, but they look at a treadmill and body fat comes off. So I feel like I can make the case that both are equally difficult based off of your genetics and where you know where you, where you see this. Well, from. here's a strategy that I've always employed for gaining muscle without gaining body fat. It's a very easy one. It's just get stronger. And 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 you don't even have to change your calories or you bump them a little bit. And you'll oftentimes see some muscle gain without fat gain. Now, the more advanced you are, the more challenging this gets. Yeah, as I say, that's less likely with yeah, you being of, advanced. Yeah. Now, fat loss without losing muscle? Wow, that's hard. That is really hard to do. Yeah. Now, if you're a beginner, I see it all the time. I get a new client in the first three months, I would always see muscle and fat, you know, muscle go up and fat come down simultaneously. But later on, that is a really tough thing to do because cutting calories is telling your body to adapt, mm -hmm. slow down your metabolism. The, the most the most effective way to do that is to pare muscle down. Yeah. Definitely not gain muscle while you're doing that. So that's the one that I would say has got to be the most challenging because I've done it many times with clients to get them to gain muscle without gaining body fat. To lose fat without losing muscle, oh, man, that's that, could, that can be really, yeah. really hard. Well, I mean, the truth is they're not technically doing that simultaneously. What's happening is they have a couple of days in a row where m muscle is being built because they've ate a, 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 the right amount of calories in order right. for them to build, and then they have a couple of days where they're actually probably a little bit in a deficit because they moved a little more or ate a little right. less, and so then the body pairs down some body fat, and so it looks like the building muscle – while not putting fat on is easier, but the truth is you're never really doing both of them at the same time. It's just, a, and again, and it goes back to behaviors, which one's mm -hmm. easier for people. And that's why I feel like I can kind of make the case for, it really just depends on what body type you are, that one is probably harder than the other based off of that. And I'm sure there's people that are listening right now that can identify with that. Like, sure. yeah, oh, I don't yeah. know about what Sal's saying. I definitely feel like this is much harder. So it really depends. Sure, but on I would bet a majority would be what I said. Uh, but yeah, there's always going to be variances, but that's, yeah. Next question is from Andy Penson. How do you deal with the weird looks you get doing the mobility sessions <laughs> in MAPS performance? Why does no one do walking or moving exercises normally? Do, did we? Uh, did we should we, ask Aaron Alexander. Did we put? Uh, um, yeah, I, I did a post like way long ago. I don't even know if it's still on there of doing froggers. <laughs> in, the, in the gym uh, of, i did a video i was teaching it did we program that in uh mass performance do you know froggers, froggers are, are in the mobility yeah. is it in there yeah. okay so yeah that one looks really weird because like you're humping the floor yeah. and yeah. it just you know what i tell you what some of the best results i ever got working out in the gym was when i stopped caring yes, about what everybody always when i cared so much about what people thought when i was working out i would do the wrong lifts i'd train too intensely add too much weight didn't do certain exercises because I wasn't good at them, so I don't want to use lightweight on them, and it was so stupid. And I had lots of clients that would have challenges with this. Oh, I, you know, I feel intimidated by working out, and I'm a new beginner. And you know what's funny? Working in gyms, I realized nobody cares. No, nobody really gives a not shit. Only it's that, all in your own head. Not only that, but I also think that uh, when you're the one person who's doing the different shit than everybody else, I think you look like you know more than everybody else. Yep. Everybody else is following each other. A bunch of parrots. Watch them and, start doing it. Yeah, copying each other and I stuff like that. I swear to God, this has happened every time. And so, yeah, I have a different attitude towards this because this was something that uh, was pretty funny because when I was on my own in training, like there wasn't a lot of other gyms that I could, you know, take my business to. And so the closest gym was Gold's Gym. Gold's Gym, everybody knows, pretty hardcore, like bodybuilding style right, gym, right? right. right? Here comes you know, here comes guy. Mr. Functional Guy, yeah. right? And, and I'm doing all these like crazy mobility moves. And so, uh, you know, I'd get all the looks and the scoffs and the, uh, you know, big bodybuilder. Uh, the next and then week. They're starting to ask <laughs> yeah. me about it. Why are you doing that to your clients, bro? And, yeah. blah, blah. and so I, I was doing like crazy stuff stuff like I, I would do like inchworms and things like in the middle where everybody had to walk in yeah. and I'm just like dude not giving any so fucks. that's how I was I feel the same way too because I feel I mean of course you do know and I do know so like if you train with that confidence that you know what you're doing that I actually feel like you look like the guy that knows more than everybody else because you're the guy who's doing something that everybody else and everybody goes over to the mirror and yeah. does bicep curls. Yeah. Every, yep. Everybody goes to the bench press and does bench press. But how often do you see somebody do a Turkish get up off the floor and do it with good form? You know, Bro, what I'm saying? I, like, I used to deadlift in the late '90s when nobody deadlifted and members would stop me. I'm a general manager. You hurt your back. Yeah. Yes, yeah. <laughs> members would stop me. What do you do? You know, here's my advice. To, first off. You're there to train yourself. So remember that. You're not there for anybody 100%. else. So who cares about anybody else? So that's number one. Number two, 
here's a couple things you could do. And I've, I've advised clients with this, people who really had issues with being intimidated. Uh, wear glasses and wear and cover yourself up. If you go to the gym in sweats, a hoodie, headphones, and sunglasses, you're in your own space. Do your own thing. Nobody gives a shit. It actually does change kind of that internal vibe. And sometimes I would do that even on my own because I like to be in my own space and pretend like well, it's just me. Everything but the sunglasses. Yeah, I, know, I used to train like that. That yeah, was yeah. especially during competitive time where I don't want any distractions. Exactly. I, don't, I don't want to talk to anybody. I would be fully hoodied out and big headphones on and head down. Like I just want to be in the zone. I don't yeah. want to be bothered by anybody. But your best results are going to are gonna start to happen when you stop caring about that. It, it's all about you, how you feel, what works for your body. Stop worrying about anybody else, and I promise your results will be much better versus when you're really concerned about you know everybody else. And I, you know, you can. By the way, uh, working in gyms for as long as I have, I mean, you can you can not only see, but you can smell the people who come in who care what everybody thinks. It's like the, the girls that would come in, mm -hmm. perfume would just like stink up the whole gym and full on makeup and. They got News the flash, none of them know what they're doing. Yeah, yeah dude. Or Don't the talk trash about them. I appreciate them. Yeah, right, right, <laughs> right. Yeah. Or the guy that's like, you Just know, got to make sure yeah. I load up this trap bar machine so everybody knows how much I could, you know. It's like, <laughs> all right, dude, nobody really cares. Nobody gives a shit. <laughs> nobody cares. Look, if you like our information, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out all of our free guides. They can help you with a lot of your fitness and health goals. You can also find all of us on Instagram. So Justin is at mindpumpjustin. I'm at mindpumpsal. And Adam is at mindpumpadam. Adam. 